Planet Zoo has been rated E10 plus by the MSRB for crude humor, mild blood, and mild violence. It has been approved for all persons ages 10 and over. This video is brought to you in part by The Night Sheriff by Phil Foglio. Bartholomew Xenon Xenon Land is protected by the Night Sheriff. Day and night, he's burdened by a witch's curse to be aware of all that live and play within the massive fantasy theme park. Now an attack on the park by a monster hunter who knows far too much threatens everything. The guests, the staff, and the supernaturals who take refuge in the park. The Night Sheriff must scramble to uncover not only the source of the threat, but the secrets of the park of which even he was not aware. If he doesn't, he may be doomed. The park may be doomed, and even the world may be doomed. And that's a lot of doom. Go to Amazon.com for your copy today. Hey kids, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Planet Zoo and the National Wildlife Park Project. Uh, what we're doing today is we're going to give you a little tour of the Polkru Europa uh, zone in the zoo. Uh, Polkru Europa, by the way, is Latin for beautiful Europe. And I got to tell you, Europe is absolutely gorgeous. At least in my experience. Now the first thing I wanted to show you over here was this little marketplace you know we've got the usual um, you know drinks and, and food there's picnic tables we've got souvenirs and we've got a couple of bathrooms and uh, I think the only thing we don't have here is an information booth but I might be wrong about that is that an information booth right there yeah that's an information booth I was wrong about that but you know we have a couple of food trucks um, the marketplace itself is a little oddly shaped, as you can see from the layout there. That's a little oddly shaped, but I thought it was appropriate, and I thought it really worked, and it gives, you know, it's, it's got a, a, a lot of open space, and of course, you know, I do have it landscaped with the trees. And you come along back this direction, and you have the um, keeper entrance for the lynx habitat. We'll be getting to the lynx habitat in a second. Now. This, of course, is the Ibex habitat, very popular habitat in this zone. Let me get a little uh, uh, altitude here so you can see it all the way. Um, I really liked how this came out. It was exactly as I planned it, and I just think it works. I think it's a beautiful, um, beautiful habitat. Now, if we come back along this route, you may notice that a lot of the paths here are slightly elevated. <clears throat> um, it's, it's all part of what I was planning here. I love the, the stained glass lynx there. It's just it's just cute. Now, this is our, our Eurasian lynx habitat. Um, and yes, I do have the game paused because right now, um, with as many people and animals as we have it, it's running a little slow. My, my frame rate like drops like from, from 60 to 30 if I actually have the game running. Um, but that's all right. I'll fix that later. I know how to fix it, and I'll fix it later. But this is the Eurasian uh, lynx habitat. It is inspired by one that I saw the lady designer do over on her channel. Um, she was talking about aviary style uh, habitats, and I thought that would just be perfect. Um, you know, they haven't given us birds yet. They, you know, I don't know if they're planning to give us birds, but I do know that there are a lot of zoos who use this kind of 
open chain links box for habitats for certain animals, including the smaller cats. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I saw one up in, at the zoo in Tallahassee, Florida. They had a, a Florida panther in one of these kind of habitats. And it worked. It absolutely worked. In fact, um, over at the Central Florida Zoo, which is in um, Sanford, Florida, there is a white Bengal tiger in a habitat like this. Now, naturally, the, the tiger habitat is larger than what I have here. I mean, this is, you know, lynxes are considerably smaller than tigers, but it was basically the same sort of habitat. Um, but yeah, this is another habitat that, that came out exactly like I wanted, and it looks really, really good. I, have, I also have a stained glass badger. That's, you know, that's nice. And it's attached to a gulpy shop. And over here, we have a, a hamburger shop. Just, you know, when you're building your zoos, remember to, to put snack bars around because people, especially if you're going to make a zoo that this, that's this size. I mean, I'm aiming for a zoo that, that, that's the size of the one in Washington, D.C. My completed project is going to be that, that large or even larger. And you can take two or three days to, to visit that zoo, and it'll take you that long to see everything. And they have snack bars and places to get drinks and food and bathrooms everywhere. So over here we have a Europe, the, the European uh, badger. Now this is our brand new baby badger. Isn't he cute? He's just cute. Playing with a skittle feeder. Mom and dad are over here in the burrow. Let me click on this so you can see it. Come on. There we go. Camera view. We'll enter camera view. And there are mom and dad. So that's just cute. You know, Andrew and Melissa are badgers. Now this is their habitat. Again, this one came out exactly as I as I planned it also. I didn't have any problems putting it together except this bit right here where the glass paneling does not quite fit into the rock wall. And that's just how the, you know, th that's just because of how the uh, terrain is figured. Um, I do remember that I spent a long time building this particular building, and the truth is it's just, it's there for the effect. It's not actually a functional building. Um, but I've seen a lot of zoos which have, you know, little little shacks near the, the, the entrance of the habitat, and that's where the keepers keep their their supplies, you know, whatever they need to, to to handle the animals and make sure that the habitats work. Of course, back here we've got our water purification systems, and then up here, back toward the ibex habitat, we have a pair of bathrooms, a lot of bushes, a lot of trees. I did that intentionally. I wanted to um, basically obscure the final habitat. And that's back here. This is the, the fallow deer habitat. Notice it's just a huge rectangle. Um, it's got a moat in the front, and it gradually climbs to be almost the same height as the guests. Almost, but not quite. That way, the guests have, a, have, have straight view lines, um, while the deer themselves feel that they are a distant, at a distance to the guests, and therefore won't panic from them you know they, they don't actually uh, uh, panic but you know this the, their sleeping area is as far away from the guests as I could get it up on a hill it's a good secure location their feeding uh, trays are naturally right where the guests can see them because that's a great way for the the deer to be seen you know you, they have to eat they have to drink so you put the food down near the guests, but you make their shelters, the places they hide and they sleep, away from the guests. Works every time. This habitat, surprisingly, did not go exactly as I planned. I was not actually planning on it being a big rectangle. And if you look, that's, that's what it is. It's a big rectangle. Um, but my original plan didn't quite work out. And I tried it a couple of times and I couldn't get it to work, so I went, okay, you know what? I know it'll work. A big rectangle will work. So it's not quite what I wanted, but it's still functional, and I can accept functional, especially when it when it does look good. I considered putting the, the uh, uh, rock wall from the European set um, all the way around, but then I remembered that I had these, this, this habitat fence wall, and this is a good-looking piece of wall. 
and I was like, no, that it fits the theme, it looks good, so let's just use that instead. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you a couple other things. I put in over here at the, at the other entrance to the zone, as you can see, there's the sign. Um, I put this display in. I've used these around, you might have seen that I've added them around uh, the zoo. Basically, this is an interesting way to, to, to use your, your solar energy collectors because you turn them into an educational display. You know, how do we fight global warming? Well, we no longer, you know, we, we want to use renewable energy, clean renewable energy. That's solar all over the place. So this is basically an educational opportunity while it also par uh, powers the nearby buildings. Um, I also included an information uh, block here, and I did that because this... You see that? Those are guest spawners. This is a brand new entrance to the zoo. Um, the guests can come in and have been coming in through this. The reason I did this is because if you look at the zoo right now, this is a pretty big area and I'm not using transport rides. I'm not using trains that'll take you from one half of the zoo to the other. So what I'm doing instead is I'm having the, the zoo generate new guests in different areas. So anyway, that was the a tour of the Europa Zone. Um, you know, let me know what you think. If you liked what you saw, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, let me, you know, like I said, leave a comment. Let me know. Um, I love hearing from you. My next project in this zoo is going to be an amphibian house. I am going to be putting it. Uh, just so you know, I'm going to be putting it in this general area here. Um, I don't know precisely where yet, but I do have a general idea what it's going to look like. It is not going to be a repeat of the uh, of the, the insect house. Um, for one thing, the guests are going to have to actually enter this building, and it's uh, you know it's it's y you'll see you'll see, but it's uh, not going to be shaped like you know it's not going to be round. It's not going to be uh, just walk around the outside to look at the insects either. You have to walk into the building. And that's the next thing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be putting it right around here. After the insect house comes the South American zone. I haven't yet um, come up with a name for it. I'm sure I'll come up with something clever or at least not quite so boring. And it's going to be over here behind the polar bear habitat up in this area here. Um, I look forward to it. I hope you look forward to it. Like I said, you know, leave me a comment. I'd appreciate hearing from you. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.